God, I'm not of a sore throat. <laughs> so I don't want to talk very loud because I might damage the throat and at the end of the day, you won't hear me talking at all. <laughs> yeah, I Okay, so um, I saw from the tendencies most of you are from transport. Where is the transport team? Okay, all of you all. And then Yola from, uh, the other one was, uh, I know she's from travel. Yola from? Which industry? Manufacturing. Manufacturing, okay. Then all those manufacturing. Healthcare, okay, great, great. But trading in healthcare or manufacturing? Trading, buy and sell. Medical center, it's like a hospital. Oh, okay, great. So, do you, do you have a uh, taxable supplies? You have parking and all that, or resources? Rental and all. Okay, okay. So, uh, but in the hospital itself, you do it. Hospital itself, not registered, huh? Are you registered? Registered it. Okay. All right. Okay. I need to recap. Let's have a flow because you know you did the GST first day last week, right? Okay, let me just introduce a little bit about myself so that uh, you know who's your current trainer life, not you'll be like, oh, who's this lady? <laughs> then suddenly someone asks you, who gave you training? You'll be like, oh, no, an Indian lady came and gave training. <laughs> okay, this is my name. Okay. Rekha Prabhakarena, that's my name, but it's not no Anna Prabhupada. That's not my husband's, and that's my husband's name, not my father's name. So if you write it down anywhere, don't go to put Anna Prabhupada. <laughs> no Anna Prabhupada, okay, Rekha Prabhakaran. Um, okay, I did my degree in Australia, in Monash University, and, uh, and, and I did my diploma and degree also there, I fully studied in Australia. So I did a Bachelor of Business in Banking and Finance, can see now. major in accounting. Okay, then came back to Malaysia. Bad news lah. Huh? Don't know why I came back also. <laughs> Everybody you should ask me why why you come back huh? Why you never stay back? Huh? Okay, never stay back because I was already married and my degree paid by my husband. Can you be with them coming back? <laughs> <laughs> then he might send some gangsters to look for me. <laughs> so I had to come back. Anyway I wanted to come back. <laughs> So came back and then, uh, uh, of course, I finished my professional papers. So I'm a chartered accountant, also uh, registered with CPA Australia. Okay, and then I completed my recently completed my GSD exams with customs recently, meaning about four five months ago, and I'm also a GSD tax agent. All right, so um, registered with uh, Ministry of Finance. Okay. And I've uh, been working for 20 years. La. So even I get older, this slide was done long ago, so the experience remained the same. <laughs> so, that, so that I don't look older. But uh, I became a consultant and a trainer full-time since uh, 2013. Okay, before that, I was doing training part-time. So working as a full-time finance manager. And last place of work was with MAPS. Okay, I started off with being an auditor. I was an auditor with a, one of the big four firms in Malaysia, Deloitte and Dutch. All right. Then after that, I joined the commercial line. Okay. I was also working for a short period of time with Malaysian Institute of Accountants for about one and a half years. We used to do investigation. I'm also specialized in uh, anti-money laundering and fraud investigation. So don't come and ask me how not to pay GST. Eh? Sorry, I cannot teach. <laughs> Then they ask me how to avoid GST, I don't have the answer. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, GST is a very, very comprehensive system in Malaysia. Okay, they have, they're so good. Anyway, I'll talk more about it when we do GST audits. They're just too good. So, if people try to avoid GST, it will be for short term. Definitely for short term. Because after a while, they will get caught. <laughs> Right? Even there are many companies still not registered, you know, still not registered. But I'm sure they're doing more than half a million. Because you know, like the boss driving Mercedes, living in a nice bungalow. How come don't do half a million? Half a million, very small threshold, why? Right? Right? 
small restaurant also should have a million. One month you need how much? Maybe forty thousand. Okay, one day you sell how much? Maybe thousand five. Don't have me? <laughs> sure, God. But it's just the one to declare. Uh, yeah, so they don't register because they want to declare, right now. Maybe they were under declaring. So, but in, in time to come, um, of course, customs and income tax are working together. So, if they work together, they will definitely have more resources to get more information. And those who are not registered will be heavily penalized. If they're really supposed to register, if Myanmar you don't qualify, then it's a different story. Okay? If you, if you qualify but you're trying to avoid it, then you're in trouble. Okay, so in KL, in Kuala Lumpur and all, um, there are many audits already started happening. I'm not sure about coaching. Any one of your companies started, is there any audit going on? No. Anyone had any questions from customs, like by email? Why did you do this? Uh, why why got zero rated? Give me invoice. Got it now. Got it. Uh, that is called desk audit. Later I explain to you what do they do. So sometimes they, they are not uh, comfortable with the information on the, your declaration, they can ask you for questions. And they can ask you for documents. Then they send some questions to you, ask you for documents. That is also a form of audit. It's just that they don't, they don't have time to come to your place and audit. So nowadays they are all doing through online. You send me the file by transfer, PDF or something like that. Okay. Alright, so let's uh, just do a small recap about what you have done. So you have learned about the accounting processes, correct? Huh? So you know about the accounting processes, you know how debit and credit works, uh, you know that about reimbursement, about disbursements, yes? Did you learn all that? Okay, okay no. <laughs> Last week learned, this week forgot. <laughs> then every month I must come and do training. Huh? <laughs> so what do you remember? What do you remember from the class last week? You issue tax invoice, okay, you're very familiar with tax invoice. Okay, refund issues. If someone refund to you, then of course you have to issue a credit note or a debit note, right? Okay, I, I'm not sure whether the trainer told you, but credit notes and debit notes are same as tax invoice. Same status, right? So if you issue a debit note or a credit note, there is also GST in it. Alright, so there's also GST. It works the same as a tax invoice. Only thing it's not the tax invoice linked to a tax invoice. Must be linked to a tax invoice. It cannot stand alone. Okay, the debit note and credit note cannot out of the blue suddenly you want to ask rental issue debit note. Cannot. The first document must be a tax invoice. And because there is amendment needed to it, maybe overcharge or undercharge, or you need to additionally something you forgot, or not happy with the product, give back, then you got debit note and credit note to do adjustments, correct? Right? And so but it works the same and there will be GST to it. What else did you go through? Any questions from last week's class that you went back and thought and then you're a bit confused and you thought, oh I better go and ask. I think it's this class, right? Anything? You did all your input tax credits, correct? No? Uh, you talked about some benefits and all. Yes? So can you remember everybody? Okay, let me ask some questions. They are all very quiet. Okay, <laughs> let me make this clear, okay? This is not a one-way class. It's an interactive class. Ask me questions as we go along. Because at the end of the day, if you're waiting for at the end of the day to ask questions, then when I say got question time, everybody will be packing to leave. Some of you got a flight to catch. <laughs> okay, so ask questions as we go along. Don't understand, just put up your hand, just shoot the question. Don't worry whether it's relevant to your friend or not. Public classes are like that. Everybody learn everything. Okay, so if it's, if it's a question that everybody will benefit, I'll definitely explain. If it's very, very specific, uh, too detailed, then I will take it during the breaks. Okay, but just ask the question. Because when it comes to your mind fresh, you shoot it is better. If you think alumni as later, you might forget about it. Or you won't have the opportunity to ask. Okay, so you are clear with the staff benefit sign. Okay, can you tell me what are the blocked input tax? Medical. Okay, medical expenses. Right? Okay. That's like I don't have your tax there, so I don't know your needs. Uh, the gentleman, let's bully the guy, all of us girls here. 
except for Sandy, he's outside. <laughs> okay, what's your name? Ajis. Ajis, okay. Ajis, nice name. I don't hear all these names in KL. Right? <laughs> okay, yes, that is. Uh, block to protest. Give me an example. Cannot claim. Insurance, what insurance? Medical, medical insurance and personal accident. Term life, no GST. Okay, life insurance got no GST. Only general insurance got GST. Okay, the one that you cannot claim is your medical insurance and personal accident insurance. PA and medical policy. These two cannot claim. Okay, got that then? What else? What other block you tax? It should be coming out very fast, right? Yes, motor vehicle, passenger car. Passenger car you buy, cannot claim, correct? No, did and not all this. Petrol, petrol. Did not, huh? Petrol. Petrol is not blocked in your tax. There is no GST on it. Why? Why no GST on petrol? Because Najib said one. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Subsidy, uh, not really because of subsidy, or maybe you can say subsidy, but it is a relief item. Supply given relief. You know what's the difference between given relief and zero rated? No? Okay, let me explain. You've got taxable supplies, right? You've got standard rated, right? And then you've got zero rated. Everybody knows about it, right? Okay. Then you've got non taxable supply, which is your exempted. Okay, totally the person cannot claim that input tax also, correct? Okay, then under taxable supply, there's one more called supply given relief. Supply given relief, but that is only for petrol in Malaysia so far. Nah. So this supply is given a relief, that means the government say no GST, zero. But anytime in future, they can always change it to standard rated. Because your taxable supply is only standard rated, zero rated, and supply given relief. So standard rated means definitely forever your whole life you will pay GST. Zero rated, your whole life no GST. But the supply given relief is, it is given a relief. Usually it's for five years or eight years like that. Okay, But for petrol, they never specify until now. Okay, But every time they read the budget, they will tell you that. They will tell you whether continue to be relieved or not. But usually it will be until they want to impose GST. Okay? That also petrol only RON 95. RON 97 but GST and not. Yes. Can claim and not. Can. So it is not blocked in protex. Okay? So blocked in protex, you told me medical supplies, you told me passenger car, you told me insurance, medical insurance and PA insurance. What else? Education. Education. All the essential, okay, so education also is uh, eh, blocked, not exempted. Education is exempted. Tak ada GSD. My mind flows the story. Okay, correct, correct. Okay, so come back to blocked. Blocked means they charge you GSD, but your company cannot claim. That is blocked in protects. Did you all do it? Did you all do it the last time with the last trainer? Yes, yes, yes. Did, yeah? yes. Okay, so there should be a list of... Seven items. Huh? Seven. Yes, seven items. So there should be a list. Okay, I think you go and look back at page... Uh, <clears throat> the summary should be there. <clears throat> now from page seven onwards. Okay, so you've got passenger motor car. Then you have your uh, family benefits. Uh, what is family benefits? That means you go, uh, your, the, your company might say, okay, let's have a family day. And everybody go on a trip. Okay? Let's say you go for, uh, for a theme park. The theme park sure got tickets, so I to buy, correct? No? The tickets got GST, no? Yes. Can you claim that as input tax? Cannot. Okay? Because it's a family benefit. 
Okay, even if you buy medical insurance, cannot. So that's next, medical insurance. Then what else? You got club subscription, right now? Yes. Yeah, club subscription, right? So if you have uh, club fees where your bosses are members of the golf club, uh, coaching very beautiful landscape. So I want to join golf club, can I tell your boss the GST cannot claim? Right? Everything must absorb by the company. Because you become, you know why enough? You know why enough cannot claim? All this block input tax. Is it because the government want to be bad to you? Okay, the, 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 the objective of GST is the consumer pay the tax. Correct? Consumer pay the tax. So, if it's a club, let's say club fees, uh, let's say you got gym club fees now, uh, right now, okay, to pay for the club. Then let's say, hi, from Mary. Yes. Okay, good. I came from KL, I came faster than you, how come? <laughs> So I came by a plane, you came by the boat <laughs> now. Okay, we're just doing a recap, recap of last week's class now. Huh? Okay, so we're, we're talking about block deprotects. Why is it blocked? It's blocked because the consumer becomes the company. Say for example, passenger car, right? Who's the consumer? You are buying it to use for yourself, correct? Or not? You're not going to use the car to generate business. Like if you're manufacturing the car, it's not used for manufacturing. Of course, you can say my director needs that car to do marketing. It's part of my business, blah, 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 blah. But customs don't accept. Unless you're using it directly for your business, that means to generate income. Then we can accept. So what generates income? Driving center. Lah. Driving center without car cannot generate income. Correct? Lah. Any other business without car still can generate income. Correct? Because you don't need the car. So because of that, blocked into tax. So when it comes to club fees, like I told you, if your director is a member of a club to play golf or to go for fitness and all that, who's the consumer here? He himself is the consumer, correct? Or he's enjoying the benefit of it, right? If you don't pay the club fees, uh, your business run or not? Yes. Correct or not? It still run, right? So because of that, it becomes a blocked into tax. So your company wants to pay, no problem. It's good to pay. Pay less income tax, no? Because more expenses, do staff welfare, lesser income tax. That is no issue. Alright? But GST don't claim. Understand? So GST don't claim. So that is what block input tax is all about. Did I leave out something? Medical entertainment. Entertainment is the last one. Huh? Entertainment also who's the benefit. You have the benefit. So what for you go and claim back your input tax, correct? So you cannot claim back your input tax. Okay? Right, so that is uh, 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 what you call some recap of the last week's class and introduction about myself. Okay, let's see what we're going to do today. So, any any questions now about last week's class? Anybody got any question about the last last class? Any question? Just go through, flip through your pages and see if you are comfortable. And, and tell me where you stopped. Where did you all stop the last time? We did all this definitely. We did all this stuff. Which one? Page one. Page 45. Is this where you stopped? If you say 45, then correct, because this was supposed to be today's class. Okay? But I want to know really where did you stop? Then, Aris, Aris, right? Ajis, Ajis. Do you remember? You were here until, everyone was here until the end of the class? Yes. 
Yeah, so what was the last slide that you do? Did you stop exactly where the divider of A2 is? Or you stopped earlier than that? Earlier than that. Or you stopped earlier than that? Mm. Yeah. All right, so you haven't done refund. Just now, um, okay, most of them told me refund issues. Yes. Uh, refund issues. Uh, so pre-printed invoice or not, you're clear, yeah. you're okay. Yeah. But the sign, I think, will look a bit different from yours. Does it look the same? Uh, yes. It looks the same, yes? Yes. Okay, then I have the correct one. <laughs> Okay, then let's do from here. Okay, so we'll do from here then. Okay, refund issues. Now, when do you get a refund? Some people come and tell me, you know what, uh, they tell me, uh, why uh, I already submitted and paid my GST, but I haven't got a refund yet. <laughs> Can I understand the question? Yes. The question is, I submitted, declared GST returns, and I paid GST already to customs, but I never get my refund. You cannot have both. Correct or not? You cannot have paid and refund at the same time, the same taxable period. Correct or not? Either one only can happen because GST system you must net off yourself. Correct? Your total output tax minus total input tax and the difference is either you pay customs or customs pay you. Correct? If customs pay you, we call that refund. Correct? If you must pay customs, then of course it's payable for you. Na. Correct? It's payable for you. So if you pay customs, then no refund. Because a lot of companies get it wrong. And then they will keep complaining so long already customs never refund. You cannot dream they are going to refund. It won't happen. Because if they are, the moment you pay them, they assume you already calculated correct and you are paying them. Correct? Why would they refund to you? Okay, they only refund if there is a negative. Input tax more than the output tax for that period, whether monthly or quarterly, for that period, your input tax is more than your output tax. Then only they will refund to you. Okay? So if every time, let's say your business is manufacturing, you, uh, after six months suddenly you got refund. No problem, they will refund. But let's say every month or so, uh, you submit JST returns for refund no payment to customs. They will suspect. They will suspect something wrong with your accounting system or you're not doing something correctly. So what they will do, they'll ask you for documents. Uh, that's why just now I told you, they ask for documents and all. Yes, they ask for documents. Okay, if they ask for documents by email and you have to furnish them documents because they want to know why. Then if you tell them, oh no, my sales all zero rated. A lot zero rated. I export a lot. I send a lot to Langkawi. Sell to Langkawi is zero rated, right? I sell to Langkawi, I sell to Tioman, I sell to Labuan. So I got no GST sales, no standard rated sales, correct? So because of that, my input tax is more than the output tax. And then they will understand. They ask you to show evidence of a few invoices, then they understand. Definitely your input tax is more than your output tax. Understand not? But 
you must have evidence for everything that you do. Lah. Okay, so refund issues is normally refund is 14 working days for electronic submission and 28 working days for manual submission or never refund. Lah. Okay, because why? If manually you submit, maybe the file get lost also can. The file got leaks can challenge and really also. Or the customs officer resign, or the customs officer pregnant, will go on two months leave or six months leave, correct or not? So manual means high chances you will never get a refund or your file is now. Okay, so we don't advise. I only advise all my clients and participants must submit only electronic, no manual submission. Okay, don't take the risk. Okay, now, uh, so your refund, you must have the right information. You know what is the main information for delay? Bank account number. Okay, if your bank account number which you gave to them in the first place, in the first time registration is not correct, they name up your issues. Because they want to refund, the, they give instruction to let's say their bank, their bank is me bank. They give instruction to Maybank, can you pay all these clients? Maybank will say, cannot find the account number. Okay, maybe you give public bank account number. They call public bank when you transfer, no such account number. Or no such person, cannot match. Right? Uh, so all these issues will come. Sometimes people don't realize, you know, because you see, you you got a group of companies. So maybe you got ABC Trading, ABC Manufacturing, ABC Consulting, all ABC, ABC. So you give a different account, ABC, Samuela, you just give. Alright? But for them, they cannot like that. They must see specifically, if ABC Trading, I must transfer to ABC Trading. If it's ABC Consulting, I cannot transfer. So there is a delay. Because then automatic cannot work, must come back to manually, the officer must check, take this file out, see how much to refund, inform the customer and say, your account wrong, get email, refund, then we can refund. If your account number is correct, then it's automated. The moment the system triggered negative, the system will give instruction, all this account negative, and automatically your refund is processed. That's why you can do within 14 working days. Understand not? Only human being one. System will do everything. System will send instruction to the bank, the bank will refund to you. If it's above a threshold, then there will be a trigger in the custom system. Something wrong. It will trigger rate. If it trigger rate, then only the customs officer will go and look at it. Then they see, oh, maybe the amount very big. Refund amount very big. And then they call and ask the client for evidence and document. Uh, all this client, every time paying one suddenly, refund, then it will trigger in rate. So this is how customs work. As I told you, Malaysian system, very good. Very chunky one, right? because come out in 2015. But for example, if it's uh, overpaid, then uh, click the contract, so they don't have to refund. Ah, they don't have to refund. Also automated. Yes, you click contract. Correct, correct. Not contract, you click carry forward. Ah, carry forward, yes. Ah, when you click carry forward, the system will pick it up as carry forward, it will keep it aside. So everything is no human being one. So that's why you can process very fast. Imagine you've got 140,000 over companies registered in Malaysia. If manually human being must do, can do it. Not 14 working days, 14 weeks also cannot finish. Correct not? How can you process so much? Right, so it's all automated. Only your company will only fall out of this category when your account number is wrong. The name cannot match. Address wrong. Some something is there. Wrong information given. That's when there is a delay, or there's a trigger. All right, trigger that every time you don't get input tax, suddenly your input tax new client come to the list. Then it will trigger in different color. It will flag it. Okay. All right. So your refund business should respond timely to GST desk audit refund verification queries. So if they send you an email and say, "Can you give me this 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 document?" You must quickly respond to them. If you respond faster, then they can process faster. So the standard operating procedure gives seven days. Right? So normally they tell you within the next seven days, please submit this, this, this. Right? So that is why your documentation and your filing must be really, really good. So that when they ask questions, you don't go that time only looking for documents. You must know exactly where, where, what. Uh, so if it's already uh, taxable period, you know that three months you close the accounts, 
you make sure that the filing is all done and closed as well. Don't keep backlog of filing of documents. And then when they request, you have to go through a whole pile. Some people very good employ apprentice to do filing also. Because the whole backlog, right? Why waste money? So do it on a timely basis. Alright? Sort your documents, checking, everything must be done, finished before submitting GST returns. So that when they ask questions, immediately you can answer them. Understand? Not? Don't keep all the backlog. Okay. So if you've got right information, you'll get fast refund. Uh, your refund, if blocked, of course you never get um, refund. Uh, but there are certain uh, certain circumstances where you've got car parking, travelling expenses, hotel accommodation, all these where the, the uh, refund is related to business but can must be proven. Must be proven, it must have evidence that it is related to your business. Understand? Uh, must be related to the business. So it depends uh, on what uh, this one. But they won't refund to employees. Uh. These are claims done by the company. Let's say they send you on training, they send you for uh, what you call a uh, conference. Alright? Yes, the company pays you, correct? Uh, for car park, hotel, travelling expenses. Travelling expenses meaning if it's a flight ticket. Uh. Okay, if it's normal mileage or no GST. Okay, toll also no GST. So of course not that travelling expenses. Okay. Okay. Claimable directly is the mobile phones. Alright. Mobile phone bills no problem, but must not be under the name of the staff. Must be under the name of the company. Alright. But what's written here is employees and neighbors accounted as business expense. Okay. Now some people the main company, then they got the staff name. That means the staff working for that company, they get the line through the company. Also, they can accept. Alright? But it must be everything paid by the company. Alright? But they don't want it to be a personal phone. Because personal phone means then very hard for them to differentiate. How much is used for business? How much is used for personal? Correct? Not? Very hard to differentiate, right? So that's why they don't want you to claim if it's personal phone. Alright, so it's best if the line is registered under the company's name. They will assume it is used only for business. Of course, like you use your phone for yourself, call your girlfriend, call everybody, definitely call your boyfriend, all. But the customs take it as used for business. Okay, same thing with laptop. You know, you cannot control people. Don't go watch movie all. Huh? You cannot control people, correct? Huh? But when it's assigned to you from the company, the asset belongs to the company, when I buy the laptop, I can claim the GST. Okay, but it's, who is going to use it? Of course, employee. Lah. Company means that the ABC cannot use it itself, right? So it must be employee who use it, alright? Okay, um, about the tax codes, I'll be teaching you later on, so I don't want to uh, confuse here. In a short while, we're going to do the tax codes. Um, certain things I think you can read it yourself, not a lot of things to, which I've already even talked to you about now. Alright, the red flags for GST audit, if you've got large refund, like I told you, suddenly got export of goods, supply of going concern, uh, definitely this one they will check, right? if you sell your business. Supply of going concern meaning you're doing business, you sell your whole business, everything, lock, stock, barrel. Then another person registered, take over. So that one got no GST. When you sell the whole business, no GST. You don't need to charge GST to your buyer. But they will audit and see whether you really sold the whole business or you just sold maybe table and chest. Because uh, some people, uh, let's say saloon. Okay, I'll tell a bit of story. Like, you know, you're looking at me, steady, early morning, not your warm up. Although I'm giving you all breakfast. Everybody ate breakfast now. Hey, people from eating not hungry, eh? they are only going to break for lunch, you know. Okay. Okay, now. Nah. If you want, you can go and get some cupcakes and keep and eat here. It's okay. You can take breakfast with me. Okay, good. <coughs> no wonder you're not bad. I ate without eating breakfast, you know. No, no, my plan is not bad. Oh, you're clean, lah. <laughs> okay, so blame it on the airlines, lah. <laughs> Okay, businesses that reported unusual GST amounts in similar uh, sector, this is what I told you, lah. everybody manufacturing pays 
your company manufacturing alone every time clean, that definitely will ask me sorry. Yes. Indicators of aggressive tax planning arrangements designed to avoid or reduce GST payable. This is if they suspect. They suspect that you very you, you may be doing some hanky panky there where your GST audit is not correct. Okay, you all got no time now. You're coaching people very good one. Don't worry. So care people. <laughs> Indicators of overclaiming input tax credits or underreporting output tax. This one is coaching people not involved. Fine. I'm really people are not involved. <laughs> <laughs> all this over claiming input tax, the, the, how I know is because people come and ask me why. They come and ask why. How come, uh, can we claim it? This one can claim it, that one can claim it. Wow, very good. Buy fridge for the house, so well, okay. <laughs> if can, uh, they will claim everything, you know. House electricity bill, they will claim, gardening also claim. Pest control, that is one company claiming. I said, pest control, I usually did it in the office. No, no I do for the house. Attached to office. Wow, you know some directors are so clever. <laughs> wait until you cannot audit. Nah. Uh, wait until you cannot audit. Then, of course, nah, they already save up so much of money. Anyway. So, must donate some donation. Okay, so powers for audit. Uh, this is all the sections you don't need to remember. You're not sitting for exam. We had to remember when we sit for exam under customs. Nah. You all don't need. Okay, RMCD expectation for GST audit, they expect you to cooperate with them. Lah. That's basically the point. Whatever they ask is buggy. Okay, you have to give it to them either in black and white or in verbal form. Whatever you have to cooperate with them. Okay, so that's what they are expecting from you. Uh, and then if you want, if they want to make photocopy, don't go and stop them. Get up, get up, get up, get up. This way, get up, photocopy. I uh, cannot stop them because under that sections that you saw just now, they have the power to assess your documents, okay? But they're not going to know secrets. A lot of people, the one is a good. Especially very old time Chinese companies, not being, uh, <laughs> not being penalized. But I know some uncles all who are doing business, very old, old time uh, companies, they will tell me, why I must give them, then they know the secret of my business. Yeah. I say, they got no time to analyze your business. They also don't want to go and book up a die. They're very happy being customs officers. They get four times tea breaks. Their life is very good. They don't want to come and do your business. Okay, so don't need to worry about giving information. Okay, no one is a people worry one. Okay, and then um, provide timely, accurate information. All this you know, like must be true and honest. Okay, you can sign over the Bible or over the the, the, the whatever lah to say that you're true and honest. And then this is the penalty. Okay, if you did not do such, if you did not comply. Okay, but I was told verbally la, that they don't really penalize heavily the first two years. Alright, but don't take it for granted. It depends on their mood. <laughs> it depends on the officer. So, correct or not? Uh, you get the wrong officer the wrong time or you don't want to cooperate, you are very rude to them, they can also penalize you because there's no black and white. Alright, it is just that if you are, if you are innocently... Uh, truthfully, don't know something they can teach you, then they can they can wave off your penalty because we are also doing it first time, correct? Right? So if you do mistakes, it's okay. But learn from me. Don't repeat the mistake, lah. Okay. Okay. Failure to submit return. Now this is serious. This is too serious. Okay. Because if you never submit your returns at all, or you never pay your GST money because you already collected from your customers, you never pay. That is wrong. Okay, or you never collect, but you of course issue tax invoice already, you got obligation to pay to customs. And then if you don't do, yes, that's really, really serious offense. Okay, that is basic. Okay, but let's say your your invoice, you left out six percent that amount, or you made a mistake in the coding, and that one all they can still excuse you. Alright? Or you issue a debit note, no GST. Okay, on a credit note, you forgot to minus, system didn't capture, wrong uh, wrong stock code you use. Okay, and that one all they can understand. So you have to do it back and you submit 
Yet, no, if you do make a mistake, then you're following taxable period, you correct it. Huh? Let's say you overcharge the following correct, uh, flexible period, you should gradual and correct. You cannot go back to the past. The current period, you do the adjustment, whether you overpaid or underpaid. You always don't go back to the past. The past, you already submitted EV as it is. You do the correction now. So let's say the last tax invoice, you accidentally charge more already to your customer. Now you issue the credit note. So we can do the amendment for this month, for the current month? Yes. All adjustment, all amendment? Current, current. Month. No need to go back. Oh. That current month, you pay less. Because huh? mm. it, it will still tally. At the end of the day, it will be the same. Mm. Last month, you pay extra. This month, you pay lesser. Yes. Okay. Because of the wrong code, lah. Yes, which ah. is and then we upload. Because the one they want to make sure you you make the adjustment correctly. Uh -huh. ah, but if it's amount because you you overcharge your customer, you have issue no, no, credit no, no. note. Ah, that one no problem. So you can do the following. Every month. This one they want to ensure you doing correct. Uh -huh. Because you already made a mistake one time, right? Wrong code. They are afraid you will repeat it again. Uh -huh. So they want you to correct it the first time, then after that you continue the same. So they will check, oh, they the monitor it. Ah, the back one. No? Ah, the back one. Like the December, I do some. Ah. Correct. They ask me to uh, amend and upload. Correct. And then they ask me to do November, October, something. Maybe because your coding all the while is wrong. Yes, all the while. Ah, that's why they want you to correct it. Because they want their statistics to be correct. Later, I teach you coding, then I tell you why they got coding. Why coding very important to them. That's right. Okay, so coding is different because they want their statistics to come correct. If not from the first ten, the statistics all wrong. So when all wrong, then they are in the, they they don't get the result that they want. Uh, especially if your company is doing high turnover, then they want you to correct it. Okay, incorrect returns you can see the penalty is lower. Incorrect they will see because of what. Because you purposely wanted to charge wrongly, you want to avoid GST, or it is really a natural mistake. Okay, but every time you tell, ayo, saya tak tahu, uh, then you kena. Sudah pergi training? Yes. Okay, sudah baca buku? Yes. Ada baca website? Yes. Macam mana tak tahu? Okay, so every time don't give the silly excuse lah. Alright, so this is all... Um, the penalties you can read through and you, you when nothing do or cannot sleep means then you read la, in the night. <laughs> All the list of uh, penalties there. I don't like to read penalties one because I know I won't get it. How's that? <laughs> Before you read penalties then you work in your mind, right? Then it will happen now. Correct? So better don't read it. Just do the right thing. Be honest all the time. Correct now? So no need to worry about penalty. Okay, now we come to D2. Happy? Yes. yes. Okay, so now we come to D2. Okay, D2, now we're going to talk about the system, the computer system itself. Okay, you all will know that last year, before they started GST, they asked everyone to upgrade your systems, correct or not? Okay, now, whatever is written there in the slide, if I read word to word, you will sleep. And by 12 o'clock, I must wake you all up already. Okay, so I tell you story. Okay, I tell you as a story, so easy for you to understand. And then you remember it for longer time. Lah. Then you're reading, you can go and read. Okay, so what happened was last year when they wanted to start GST, they know some of you all are doing manual and some of you all got accounting systems. Right, you know? But when they bring in this type of new system in the country, they want everybody to be the same. Okay, so customs have already designed how this GST system is going to work? Actually, not customs lah. Of course, they hire external consultants, these IT people, to design how GST is going to work. And it is not just done by RMCD customs. RMCD is just monitoring it. They are the administrators. But it was done jointly with income tax. Okay, LHDN. Okay, Ministry of Finance uh, initiated it. So the budget came up from Ministry of Finance, and then it is customs. Plus, Lembaga uh, Hasil Dalam Negeri, LHDN and Royal Malaysian Customs, okay, together they came up with this system, okay, to implement GST in our country. So how come they're so clever suddenly? 
they are not so clever. They don't think Malaysia very clever. <laughs> they copy. Yeah, they copy. From where they copy the system, all other countries already got GST or VAT. Correct? Right? When Singapore gone, they call it VAT, right? Okay, so they copy from Australia, Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, all the neighboring countries. They take all their, uh, their, their system of GST and they compare which one will suit Malaysia the best. So, a lot of people ask me, hey, is it exactly the same as Australia? Is it exactly the same as Singapore? Is it the same as Indonesia? Because they got maybe holding companies in that country. But it is not exactly the same as any country. Because they took the best of everything. <laughs> so, Malaysia went one step higher, more chunky. Because they take the best of everything. Because when you come out the latest, obviously you already research, right? Now. You already research, right? You already research all other countries and then you see which one is the best. You take and implement for yourself. So they come up with the blueprint. The IT blueprint, they call it. Okay, that means they come up with an IT coding, the main coding. And they call all the software vendors in Malaysia and tell them, whoever can incorporate this into their system, I will give you endorsement to sell your software. Okay? So they tell you that your system must have this, this, this criteria. And this is the criteria. Okay? The system for up must have all these this, uh, criteria to function. Okay? That means installing the system, configuring, update, everything. Once you already incorporate a customs uh, requirement into your software, then every time customs want to update, they just have to give you the file and you can update your system already. No need to every time create new. The first time you put it in, you come up, you develop the system, correct? Now, after that, you just have to get updates in it. So, become very easy because you remember GST just started. So, there is more updates to come in future because they will keep finding out, you know, when, when you got a problem, you go to them, you tell them, I got a problem, and they see, I have this problem first time coming to me. Then they will find the solution, correct? Then they come up with a new decision. <coughs> Then in that decision, they will implement. Then that decision become the rule. Then they will tell the software people, now, new thing came up, update everybody's software. Okay, so that's how they keep updating, updating, updating your software. Okay, so what happened was a lot of companies, they went and took this blueprint, they tried to develop their system. So they developed their system, after that they sell to clients. But you must remember that a lot were already telling uh, they are approved by customs, but actually they are not, you know. Must be really, really approved. Some were cheating also in between. Okay, some were cheating. Simply say, oh, we are endorsed and approved by customs. If they are endorsed and approved by customs, they must have that fund to incorporate in their system and then only they sell to you. Okay, normally the big ones on you don't have to worry, lah, like SAP, NYOP, Singapore, Australia, q &E. A lot of softwares are no problem. Okay, UBS. Um, what other software you use? Pardon? Mr. Accounting. This one? Account. Account. Ah, auto account, yes. Auto account, all that is GST approved because they took the trouble to upgrade their system. They to incorporate this blueprint of customs into their system. So once incorporated, customs can read your files. You generate the GST audit file, they can read it. Because they have the master copyright, they can read all your files. So everybody were very scared. All those who are hiding profits. Lah. <laughs> they were very scared. Oh, oh, after this they will know exactly. Yes, they will know exactly. That is the whole idea. We have to develop to become a clean system. You go to Singapore, you go to Australia, you don't have all these issues of hiding profit. No two books all, Excel one list, computer system one list, uh, no such thing all. <laughs> I'm telling you out of experience, uh, I've seen all that happening. Okay, so don't have all those things. Alright, so only one book, very clean, declare correct income tax, pay correct GST. Okay, so that's what all happened. And these are all the uh, features of the GST compliance system. So it's supposed to have all this uh, Documentation, accounting wise, the returns, the internal controls, everything must be there. Okay, so they, they emphasized on all this. Okay, then of course now one big question came. Is it compulsory or necessary? Yes, it is compulsory. 
why compulsory? If you don't have computer system, there's no way manually you can get accurate GST returns. No way. Definitely you'll make mistakes. Because we are not robots, we are human beings, right? We definitely will make mistakes. So they don't trust. So that is why we really, really is both. It's necessary and it is compulsory. You must have a computer system. But a lot of them today, they still issue uh, pre-printed invoice. They write down, right? Manually. Yes, can still be used. But later on, they will go back and key into the computer system. So they are still doing that, right? Yes, they can still do that. Because some of them, the salesmen are traveling. They can't carry a computer with them to print everywhere. <laughs> right? Uh, so because of that, they still issue the tax invoice or the delivery order or whatever you can call it manually. Then they come back to the office and then they key in again. Okay? Then some of them generate the tax invoice, the proper computerized one, and send it to the clients. Some they don't lah. Because maybe the written one is already a tax invoice. Okay, if written one already tax invoice, then fine. But when key, it must tell you. But more job for the customs officer lah. Because auditing time, they have to check the pre-printed invoices as well. Correct not? So that is more job. More job means they are happy or not happy? Not happy. But chances of them charging your penalty if it's wrong? Yes. That's the key, yeah? I already told you. You don't make them happy, don't la make them happy by buying yam chala, take them for te tare la, tell them come and go for dinner. That is wrong already. That is donation already. Now we don't use the word raswa. Donation. <laughs> Okay, so these are the tax codes. Okay, so we've got 23 tax codes. Okay, out of the 23 tax codes, you've got one whole list for supplies. So how many years for supplies? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten for supplies and thirteen for purchases. So these ten codes that you use for supplies. Okay, now of course the one that you're very familiar is your standard rated code. Lah. Okay, because all of your got standard rated supplies, definitely you charge SR. Okay, then they got so many breaking. Do you know that Malaysia has the highest level of tax codes? Malaysia, I told you what, Malaysia already advanced. They already researched so many countries, right? So they, they want to incorporate everything that everybody got. So they need the most. So Malaysia has the most number of tax codes. Can you give yourself a clap for that? <laughs> Malaysia Bolia. <yeah. laughs> Okay, so they had so they had to go and break down. Can you see? Even zero rated, they got zero rated, two types of zero rated. They had to just go and break it down to the very, very detailed level. Why? Is it important for them to do this? Why do you think zero means zero? Lah? Correct? Zero means zero, no GST, that's all. Why you want to know zero because of see how many zeros there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven types of zero code. Does it make any difference to you? To you any difference or not? Whatever code you select, it's going to be zero, correct? Any difference to the company or not? Any difference to you all or not? To the business? Think and see. Any business? Any difference? No. Correct or not? If you're going to invoice, suddenly let's say you choose ZRE, or you choose ZRL, or you choose DS, or choose ES, whatever you choose, zero. zero. No difference, correct? You are not going to collect GST at all. So, why is it so important to customs that you must follow? Why they must give this coding that you must follow? Because they want statistics. Very simple. I told you already, they didn't work by themselves. They work together with income tax as well. Okay? Now, they want statistics, alright? That means later on, if they need to do any uh, implementation of any changes or any declaration of benefits, okay, they want to know people who do the most exports. They can know very easily because they just have to choose all those who got coding ZRE. Correct not? All those who use for their sales the coding of ZRE, they know now for sure this is their total exports from the country. Correct? So are you feeding them information? 
Yes, that's why they want that information to be accurate. Ah, that's why if you make a mistake in the coding, they ask you to redo. Because they want their statistics to be accurate. Understand? Huh? So give your extra work. Lah. Your, for your extra work, maybe extra cost, because you need a staff dedicated to look into this, especially if you've got so many types of business. Correct? If one company, one type of business, okay, fine. Right? Hey, can you all, are you all okay with me, everybody? Yes, Nobody sleeping with the eyes open? <laughs> <laughs> but there is corporate share for example, uh, ah. etiquette. Do you choose uh, the other one? <coughs> uh, because you know. Okay, if, you are, if, if ethical is international, yes. then it will be ZRE. Mm -hmm. If the ethical, uh, local means definitely is SR. Yes. Ah. Yes. Correct, correct. So you must see whether it is. But don't worry, they will come up with another code. Yes. You know what code will come out? ZRA for airlines. <laughs> if they want to break it down, can they break it down or not? Can. Yes. They add another code. Oh, very simple. They add another code, send email to all the software, update all your system. Then the software company will send to all the companies and say, upgrade all your system. Simple or not? Simple. Now they're very easy already. They make their life very easy. They want any more statistics, they will just do an upgrade to their master copy. And then, uh, so now life becomes very easy for the government. So they got all the information on their fingertips before they have to come shop by shop, company by company and, and take statistics. Right, uh, what business you do, how much is your sales. Even they ask you to declare your income tax, you don't declare correctly. Correct. So very hard to get information because you do manually. And then you'll tell me your file hilang. Then you tell Excel, my backup also hilang. My computer crash. <laughs> Manually, seven years only you keep. Correct? After that, you throw away. So now, very simple. Everything you are submitting to, uh, to, to them on quarterly basis. So you don't have data, never mind. They have data. In 10 years' time, you don't have the data what you did last year, correct or not? But they have or not? They have. For them, 7 years or 70 years or so, they won't destroy. Correct? Because this is a country. The country got history back. The country's history will always be there. Correct or not? They have very huge archives. The history of whatever they have done will always be there. Alright? So, definitely they will not destroy their statistics. Okay? So, that's why they did that. So let's analyze this text coding. So you use SR if you charge for all your local standard rated supplies. Correct? No? Correct? Anything that you sell locally, that the item can charge GST, you charge GST and you use the code SR. Okay? No issues on SR. So if you use, in the, uh, if you issue a credit note or debit note, what coding you use? SR also. Okay, when it comes to supply, if you issue credit note or debit note, please use SR code. If you use SR code, it will minus off straight away from the output tax. If you don't use SR code, you see down here there's one AJS, adjustment for supply. Let's say you issue debit note, you issue debit note, and then you use this AJS code. The problem is, it won't come out in your total output tax. It will come out as a separate line. Yes. Ah, it will come out as a separate it's line. No, no amount. Huh? No amount. No amount. Yes. Only the value. Correct, correct. So you don't do that. Don't use the AJS code. Use your SR code. Just maintain your SR code so that your calculation don't go wrong. Because I, I don't let clients take the risk. You don't do AJS and go and manually calculate. In case you make a mistake, correct or Or you leave out. You overlook that amount, you just see OGST oh, payable so much, you just go and pay. You leave out. Can happen, right? Because of course you all are maybe higher level, you all understand. But you ask your clerks to do, then they can make mistake, correct? If, you, if you're not around, you don't check. Or issues. Huh? Are you okay?
Are you okay with me speaking English, right? Anybody yes. needs in Bahasa translation? Bahasa only can lah. Other language cannot. 